Hello. Okay. What a lovely day it's been today. Yes, it's a miracle. We've had some sun. Don't know what happened, but we've had the sun. It's been shining lovely all day. To the point I had my window open in my balcony. And I heard some ruckus going on in here. Right? And my one cat goes running out the balcony when I get up to come in. And the other cat is jumping all over my table trying to get this great big bumblebee. It's like, oh my God, get the cat out, open the window. Right? So I got the cat out and I've opened the window. Thinking the bumblebee had gone, I've opened the door a bit later. No, the bumblebee's still there. So I've got the cat out again. <laughs> and uh, I've opened the window wide this time. So I believe the bumblebee has gone. So I hope you all had a lovely day. So, where do we start with Jay Slater? What's next? Right. I understand he will be flying home very soon. But I'm not saying when. It's all very secret, 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 secret. Quietly done. And I can understand that. Why? I can understand why. But I'm just wondering when they do fly him back home. Will there be an autopsy done? Or will I just have, with an inquest, or will I just have an inquest without, and just go on the reports from the Spanish autopsy? Right. Personally, I think I need to do a DNA test just to confirm it is him. I'm not saying it isn't, I'm just saying it'd be nice to know for definite. Right. And there's something that's been bothering me for a while now since this happened, since I found his body. Right, and I'm going, I'm going to go to TikTok. Because Jay Slater went missing on, was it the 17th, 16th, 17th of July? And there's still questions that need to be answered, such as, why would two... 30-ish guys take back a young 19-year-old back to their Airbnb. Why has their stories changed? Like, first time you heard, oh, we wanted to carry on partying. Right? Then, but when I got there, the one guy went straight to bed, gave Jay, the other guy gave Jay a blanket, and a towel if you wanted to have a shower. And he went to bed. So there's no carry on party. Then it comes out. Oh, his friends had left him there. And he had nowhere to go. Well, that's a lie. He had his own, own accommodation. <laughs> his own accommodation. So he had somewhere to go. Then it came out. Oh, he lost his key. Yeah, so, driving back to his accommodation, and I'm sure he shared uh, a room or whatever with um, his best friend, Brad. Right? Knock Brad up, get him to wake up, get the hotel or whatever, the apartment, whatever, to let him in. He had somewhere to go. With or without a key, he had somewhere to go. So, me personally, I'm th I'm thinking, there's all these things going through in my head then. I'm thinking, hmm, a bit weird that. 
And then it comes out like the next day, Jay's missing. And apparently he took a Snapchat of himself at the door having a cigarette with a blanket around him. Now, if you look at that picture, that blanket is the same as from Lucy Mays. And um, same colours, same design, everything. So what is a blanket of Lucy Mays doing up there? Right? Because Lucy May, apparently, didn't know. Didn't know about... These two guys. They said they never met them before. They met them that night. You know what I mean? So... I'm going to show you a YouTube first, and it's Wax Unfiltered. And he's been very good getting some evidence out there, and so has another guy called Joseph Morris. Right? He's been good getting the evidence out there. But let's listen to what this guy has to say first wax unfiltered i'll put his link in the description below and hold on i just got to share it with you but you've been very good coming out with the information So it's eight minutes long. Oh, let's just go in, go past the intro. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to listen to this because this guy here who talks, his video is showing he knows what he's talking about he studied forensic and criminological psychology i've also studied forensic archaeology you know remains location burial sites that kind of thing so i know a little bit um and i'm trying this this jay slater thing it um, was just not washing with me um his apparent remains i say that because we don't know if they are his remains we don't actually know if he remains it's been confirmed that the family was advised not to view the body. So up until this point, Tuesday the 23rd of July, the family still haven't seen the body yet. Turn up, like, conveniently, near to where his, like, phone last pinged, yeah? Um, that's a bit weird in itself. Um, when the investigation first started, well, you'd hope that that was when he first started, like, thoroughly searching with, like, cadaver mm -hmm. dogs, etc. Um, and nothing was found, not even a bead, nothing. Then all of a sudden, his remains turned up right near to where he first started looking. That's a bit yeah. strange. I don't trust the Spanish police. I certainly don't trust that Lucy May. I think she's got more involvement in this. I don't trust the music is coming from his video. And he's playing the music because... Uh, because of um, disclaimers. Right? As a disclaimer. So if you play music over a video, they can't say, well, you're copywriting me. You know what I mean? That's why I put a picture up, so that all you get is the voice. As far as I can throw it. Um, so, like, he's been missing for like nearly a month now. And I don't think that uh, the police knew how much media coverage this was going to get in the first place. I really don't think they underestimated that. Because people go missing all the time. So, you know, it would be like, really how many people are going to get. So, this is bad for tourism. Nobody wants to go over there at the moment, do they? Because of this. So, they needed closure. So, all of a sudden, remains have turned up immediately. 
I actually want to get the full video for this. Um, I saw it somewhere, didn't download it, and now I can't find it. If anyone knows where I can get it, please do. Comment down below, send me an email, dive into my DMs, whatever you prefer. So someone is lying, according to this guy. Let's listen Shit. to this. But something that no one's picked up on, only I can. Check this. Let me read off my screen and you can see it there. It makes it easier. Jay Slater's friend has revealed more about the Brit teenager last movements on Monday before he vanished in Tenerife. Lucy told Sky on Wednesday how those searching for Jay on the island managed to track down the exact place he stayed on the Sunday night. She said he managed to find the house. I knocked on the door and there were two people there. The mystery pair told Lucy that he had gone out to buy cigarettes before returning to their apartment. Hold on. It says, Lucy told Sky on Wednesday how they searched for Jay on the island, managed to track down the place he stayed on Sunday night. Sunday night. He didn't go missing till Monday. Hmm, there's a red flag. Once oh, he got wow. back, he told them he wanted to go home to his accommodation. Check that though. He wanted to go home. He bought cigs. Why, if he was first eh, why would he buy cigs and not? A so this is conflicting with the stories that we already have from Lucy and Ayub. Remember, Ayub told us that he offered him a cigarette. He didn't mention about Jay going out, going to the shop and buying a cigarette. That's true. He didn't, did he? But Mark is saying, you know, when they stopped, when they apparently stopped on the way to the Airbnb to get a drink at 5.30 in the morning, why didn't Jay go and buy some cigarettes then? Because perhaps when he did get back to the Airbnb, the shop by him wasn't open. So that's probably why he didn't have a cigarette when he got to the Airbnb. But why didn't you buy some cigarettes from the shop? What they stopped at? Because they needed to get video proof that they was up that way at this time. Right? So why didn't you get cigarettes from there? It wouldn't make sense for him to go to the shop and buy cigarettes and not buy water or drink if he was dehydrated. Exactly. Also, we were told by Ayub that he got a call from a friend of Jay's. But we also got confirmation, remember, on Festivize video where he spoke to Ayub on Instagram and Ayub confirms that Lucy turned up at the Airbnb. He said he was woken up by Lucy knocking at the door. Now, how did Lucy know where the Airbnb was? How did Lucy's blanket get out of the Airbnb? Bearing in mind, Ayub also confirmed in his statement that he's the one that gave Jay the blanket. So it only makes sense to me that Ayub and Lucy have known each other. They've probably known each other for quite some time. And she got to the Airbnb based on the fact that Ayub gave her the address. So the stories are very conflicting. The stories are not making sense. But this is new information that I've literally stumbled across today. And this is published by the mainstream media where Lucy is caught in a lie again. Okay. So just to let you guys know, if you need context, then please go and check out all the other videos that we've done on this case. However, this is allegedly Jay at that Creamfields festival. But also this was taken at the festival and it claims that it was taken from Jay's phone. Now this has been published by the main TikTok account, uh, Jay Slater Missing. I think it is the main TikTok account. Hold on. In that picture, I know, I'm going to show you the picture. I'm going to show you this one. Right? In that picture, it says, one of Jay's favourite songs on his phone. I can't believe today not only did we find nothing on your phone from when you was away, no videos, no photos. Hmm, that is strange. You're surely, if you go on holiday, do I take vi some photos, some videos, something? We also got refused to see you. I am so sorry this happened, Jay. Why would he not have any fo photos or videos on his phone? 
that doesn't matter. Have the Spanish, are the Spanish police doing an investigation into this? Because I'd be check, I'd be saying, why aren't there no photos? Can you forensically check his phone, please? Can you see if there's anything been deleted off in the past four weeks? They can do that. They can go back years on a phone. So they can go back four weeks on a phone and check if anything had been deleted. When it was deleted, what time it was deleted. So. Um, has been given all the updates. They've actually been shutting down other accounts. I've literally gone and done my research on them. And they've been leaving comments on other accounts claiming that those accounts are fraudulent and they're just trying to monetize on a bad situation. And they're saying that their account is the legitimate account. Now, I looked at their account and one of the first pictures on that account is actually them at a festival. Guess what? It's the Creamfields Festival in 2023. First video that was published on that TikTok is from that festival. But it wasn't fabricated because guess what? The date that it was published was the date of when that festival was taking place. So whoever owns that Jay Slater and Missing account, they know Jay. They are personally connected to Jay. And they would have started that account back when that Cream Festivals took place. Now, yeah. back to this clip. This clip basically says one of Jay's favorite songs on his phone. So they're making out that they've actually found this on Jay's phone. So that means Jay's phone must have been found. Have they found Jay's phone? Do they have Jay's phone? Does somebody have Jay's phone? If we was to get hold of every single one of these guys' phones, it would give us so much more information about what actually took place before the Airbnb and after the Airbnb. And we don't have any confirmation on whether that phone has been found. But this person here is confirming that the phone has been found and they must have the phone. This is what they're saying though. I can't believe today, not only did we find nothing on your phone from when you was away, no videos, no photos. We also got refused to see you. I am so sorry this is happening, Jay. Like I said, they haven't been able to see Jay's body at this point. But anyhow, if this is Jay's footage and this is off Jay's phone, then I can only assume that Jay would have been the person recording this footage. But guess what? We've got this footage at another angle. Let's take a look. See me. Everyone knows. Obviously, it's supposed to be Jay's friend, Jay Slater's friend, right? This was at the Mint Festival, so bear in mind they went there. This was the festival date. This was R seven to nine o'clock. Morgan C tree, right? Remember this as well. Mm -hmm. He was wearing the same football top, a Puma black top. In this video that's going viral, as well as the ones I'm going to show you now. <laughs> All right, so this is the other angle. Now guys, what you might need to do is go back to the last clip so you can see the angle on where Jay was allegedly standing and filming this guy, this DJ. Now, this clip we got on the screen gives us the angle of where you can see the person that's filming on Jay's phone. If that was Jay filming, allegedly, he would be here right now. And we should be able to see him in this clip, holding his phone, taking that footage. Let's have a look. So it's the same DJ, right? Now I'll tell you who the person was. It's this phone right here. You see this phone where he's pointing? You can see an iPhone. That is exactly the person that was taking the footage that's claiming it was Jay's footage. Now this is a girl. It's actually a girl that's taking this footage. And how you can tell it was that position, if you go to the last clip, it was right at the corner of the DJ desk. And it's literally this girl right here. It's this girl. I'm going to go back to that clip. Right. is allegedly Jay so at right, that yeah. Creamfields Festival. But also, this was taken at the festival, and it claims that it was taken from Jay's phone. Now, this has been published by the main TikTok account, uh, Jay Slater Missing. I think it is the main TikTok account that has been given all the updates. They've actually been shutting down other accounts. I've literally gone and done my so, research on them, and they've been leaving comments on other accounts right. claiming that yeah. those accounts are fraudulent, right. and they're just trying to monetize on a bad situation. And they're saying that their account is... I'm not monetizing.
Our channel's not monetized. Right, so she's right in front of that guy. Right there. On the corner. Now, let's see if we can see again, because it's very hard to see on that video. So she's got to be here. There. It's got to be that person there. Either that one or that one. Guys, what you might need to do is go back to the last clip so you can see the angle on where Jay was allegedly standing and filming this guy, this DJ. Oh. Now, this clip we got on the screen gives us the angle of where you can see the person that's filming on Jay's phone. If that was Jay filming, allegedly, he would be here right now. And we should be able to see him in this clip holding his phone, taking that footage. Let's have a look. So it's the same DJ, right? Now, I'll tell you who the person was. It's this phone right here. You see this phone where he's pointing? You can see an iPhone. That is exactly the person that was taking the footage that's claiming it was Jay's footage. Now, this is a girl. It's actually a girl that's taking this footage. And how you can tell it was that position, if you go to the last clip, it was right at the corner of the DJ desk. And it's literally this girl right here. It's and this girl. It's all girls in the front here. There's no boys standing here. But this girl right here with this silver phone, I'm not too sure if you can see it. That yeah. Right, so. So, that was that one. Right, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but. I'm going to go. Actually, no, if there is remains. Come right there. To this guy, Joseph Morris. Right? Oh, God. Go back again. Why isn't it doing it again? All right. Come on. So, Jay Slater. So, this is Joseph Morris, and he's been very good as well. So, let's see what he's got to say. This was three hours ago. His friends make a shocking update as Spanish police push back on their investigation, buying them time. So Jay Slater's devastated family may have to wait a whole year to get the answers on exactly what happened to the teenager out in Tenerife. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video with me and Miss Gabby, the best private investigator on all of YouTube. The 19-year-old disappeared for over four weeks before his body was found in a treacherous ravine with a number of mysteries and unanswered questions still surrounding the case. And there was a lot of misinformation in this case, even propagated I by mainstream media with this video that was actually from an old rescue and not affiliated to the Jay Slater case at all. So we really don't have much information about Jay Slater's discovery or body or what state it is in, and neither do his family. So the Slater family are due to bring back Jay's body to his hometown of Ozzel Twistle, Lincolnshire, in the coming days, but Tenerife cops are yet to complete their investigations into his passing. This means the UK authorities could be forced to hold off on their official inquest for months until Spanish officials complete their findings. An inquest in the UK may then take even longer to conclude based Oh John, we've got to wait until the Spanish finish their investigation. No. Why can't we do an autopsy now? Why can't we do an autopsy once it's back in the UK? Right, that doesn't make sense. 
Uh, based on the nature of Jay's case and the complexities around it, most coroners aim to finalize the results within nine months of the initial inquest getting underway, say the coroner's court support service. Cops said Jay's body became, quote, very deteriorated, end quote. It's been my internet playing up. Yeah. Right. After it had spent weeks in the Masca Ravine, where he was eventually discovered on July 15th. Initial evidence seems to point to the Brit accidentally falling to his unalive after a preliminary autopsy by Tenerife authorities revealed the teen was found with broken bones. Jay's mother, Debbie Duncan, and the rest of Jay's family are said to have found a sense of comfort after hearing he likely passed instantly from the fall rather than suffering for days in a ravine. Investigations are yet to be finalized on Jay's tragic passing, meaning an inquest in the UK could still take place if they think it is necessary. So Jay's body was found on Monday, July 15th, a full 29 days after he vanished. The Spanish police called off the search three weeks into their investigation. Two but weeks. then suddenly the Spanish police decided to search again and they were the ones to find Jay's body before the team from the Netherlands did. An insider revealed that the body was actually found on Saturday after an anonymous tip-off, and it was retrieved on Sunday and announced to the British press on Monday. So what the mainstream media is telling us is inaccurate. Jay's body was identified because his belongings were found on him, but interestingly, his clothes were found beside him, almost as if someone tossed him off revealed they had to travel right. two and a half hours to find his body down a ravine and they had to use machetes to get to this location and even when they reached the bottom of this ravine they had to use a drone to see the exact location of jay's body and you can see in this video that there was a sniffer dog that sniffed out the location but even the dog couldn't get to it because it was still too steep for them but it was revealed Tenerife authorities had already taken Jay's body away using a helicopter. Right? No, I'm all done. I just want to get back a bit on this. Because I want to see this video. Alright? Found on him. But interestingly, his clothes were found beside him. Almost as if someone tossed him off this cliff and then threw his clothes down with him. The Dutch search team revealed they had to travel two and a half hours to find his body down a ravine and they had to use machetes to get to this location. Now, this is my question. If he was pushed from up here at the top, right, if he was pushed up from there at the top, right, a, he would have died, but B, would he have not landed? Hold on, I'll show you that clip again. Yeah. Hold on. that sniffed out the location, but even the dog couldn't get to it because it was still too steep for them. Right. But it was revealed Tenerife... Now, if he'd been pushed from the top, right, bear with me, watch what I'm saying. Reef authorities had already taken Jay's body that what? sniffed out the location, but even the dog couldn't get to it because it was still too steep for them. But it was revealed Tenerife authorities Hold on, I'm had part. already taken Jay's body. Would they not have been found on one of these lower parts of the cliff? Because the cliff doesn't go straight down. It shows you how it goes away up. using a helicopter before the Dutch team it and goes. their dogs arrived. 
Authorities on the island also took some of the ground beneath Jay to confirm how long he had been there. So before this team even arrived, it was all the evidence was already gone. So I want to know how did he get to the bottom of that ravine? If they even that dog could not get down there because it's too steep. They got down so far, but they couldn't get any further. The dog. Right, because it's too steep. And then they had to get the drones in to find him properly. Come on. How did he fall from that height right down into that ravine? I'm sorry. I've seen this video. The authorities will not, not allow the family to ID Jay with their own eyes, given the state of his body. He's down there somewhere. He would have landed. And a preliminary autopsy revealed he had multiple broken... Yeah, around this way. He would have landed on one of the lower edges. If you understand what I mean. So how did he get down, right down in that ravine? Even if he's climbing down himself, he would have landed on one of the lower ledges. Yeah. But he didn't. He was in the ravine at the very bottom. I've got my opinions. Let me know what you think because it just doesn't fit right. And bones, which is consistent far. with a 500 foot fall. And you can actually see the cliff in this video that he allegedly fell from. But, you know, many cyber sleuths are also pointing out that he could have faced something more nefarious, such as being pushed off that cliff. Pretty much everyone is calling into question the Spanish authorities' handling of the case since there are a few details. Because even to get down there, you need to climb down to that ledge. You know what I mean? It's not, oh, just take a wounded down here. You've got to climb down to get to that ledge. Those that really stand out as suspicious, including how... Right? So would you not think his body would have landed on one of them other ledges rather than down, right down in the ravine? This is what makes me think he was put there. And as for broken bones, that could have happened in a fight, even being beaten, and then maybe thrown down there. But I don't believe he was thrown. He found. He would have landed on one of these. To get him right down in that ravine, you've got to throw him. You've got to literally throw yourself out. Right? You know, you see these people who dive from the cliffs, yeah? Right down. And they go past all the rocks and everything to land in the sea. They dive right out to miss them rocks to hit the sea. So, you'd have to do something like that. You'd have to take a run and flipping jump to get past all these other cliffs. But, you know what me is, I'm going to pull up Google Maps. Right. I'll just take the music off. Right. Now. Put the layers on because I can work. I can see it better. For some reason, I can get my bearings better. Come on, load up at Google Maps. Right. This is where his phone... Last pinged. Round about there. Now, 
that Christopher from Tenerife, he did this, he went down into the ravine and he got stuck, he couldn't get any further. Right? But the ravine that they're showing us is like over here. Because let's have a look again at, um, is it on here? Yeah. See? The ravine, that's where Jay's phone last pinged. And this is the ravine here. Right, Masca Village, those days there, yeah. So, actually, Jay's day was the Airbnb, was I should say. No, not the Airbnb, but the Airbnb was round there somewhere, round town. His phone last pinged round here. Now Christopher was going down this way, I believe. Or was it that way? But the way he showed on his maps, he was going this way. But the way they're showing, it's like this ravine here. Okay? Now... This, if it's this ravine here, if, let me pull out so I can see better. Why? Right. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah. Be easy if they didn't have all these stupid pictures on here. Um, phone ping. Right, I'm trying to get it on Google Maps, match it up. So I can find the right area. So it's not that one there by Masca Village. So it's not that one there. So is it this one? Or is it not that one? Right, let's have a look again. Masca Village, there. Jay stays at MB here. He walks up this road, so, and then goes off track here. I'm trying to find it on Google Maps. I think it's... This one. Alright, uh, because if we go all to, Yeah, I think it's this one. I'm not sure. Uh, no, because that one's got a big beach. This one hasn't got a big beach, has it? Um, it's got to be this one, because that one's got, like, flat... That's got like a, a flat ground, but it isn't, it isn't flat. But um, this one is showing small rock. So I think, oh God, let me get to the right one. I think, because that's the one there, I think it's this one. I think. Let's go back to that picture again. Must have been you got that there. Yeah, I think it's that one. I think it's this one. 
Not that one. This one. Right. Right, so it's not this one. It's not that one. It's got to be this one. Got to be that one. Because. Can't be. I don't know. Could be this one. Or. No, it's not that one. I know it's not that one. It's probably this one. Right, now that was the one where Christopher was heading towards. And he said he couldn't get any further. Right? Because he was following the Barranca Duran Lopez one. Alright. So where So they're saying it's like here. But I still don't understand how someone could Because the way Christopher on his, hang on, I'll just pull it up. Right, the way Christopher shows it is fairly right. Right, I'm going to show you this one. No, 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 no. No, I'm trying to find the right one. Uh, fucking hate TikTok. He's taking over to here. So he was in that ravine, but there's areas which was unpassable for him. Right? So, if he couldn't get past it, how the hell will Jay get past it? Come on, look at this one again.
right? So, as I said, if he can get past, and he's more well-equipped, because he's got, like, a stick or whatever, so he could knock bushes and whatever out the way and things like that. But he can't get past there. Jay had no stick. He had no proper, proper gear. How the hell would he get past? You're not going to, are you? You've got to climb around this rock edge. You're not going to do it. So, my question is, how will Jay get there? Right? How did he end up with so many... When his body was found, how did his body end up with so many broken bones? Because apparently he fell five to 600 feet. But if he's already gone down half the way, he's not going to be falling five, 600 feet. And that's if he's even got past there. Right? <laughs> So, and then to find out his clothes were either in a pile next to him or by him. So he had no, he was found undressed. We, got, we think your phone, his phone was on him because they're now saying that they had no pictures on there of the holiday, no videos, nothing. So, why is there no pictures or videos on his phone? What? And I, I can't believe he wouldn't do that. He'd take photos. He'd take videos. All youngsters do. Christ, I go to the bus stop and I see youngsters doing TikToks at the bus stop. <laughs> really? Really? They're doing like little dance TikToks. Everywhere they go, they're doing some video. Right, so. Like I said, there was a lot of questions. We need answering. And I don't think we will get the answers for them. Because. If. This came out that he was unalive. He will not help the tourism in Tenerife. It really wouldn't. Right? Plus, they'd be saying, okay, so why did it take you 29 days to find him? Why didn't you get the helicopter to drop you down? Before. Yeah. But there's certain stories now of Lucy. That one about how she went to the house on Sunday. The Airbnb on the Sunday. Why? Why was she at the house on the Airbnb on the Sunday? It didn't go missing till the Monday. So... Hold on a minute, I'm just going to leave you some music because I've got to go and get a drink. Hold on.
Hi guys, I'm back. Right. So, next recap. On that video we've just seen before, it came out that it said that she went. Now, I'm going to go back to that video. And we haven't even watched all of this yet. So, hold on. I'm just going to go through this. All right, all right. <laughs> right, now, I was talking about these fingerprints the other day with my son. Right? And it's quite knowledgeable when you want to be. I love him really. But he turned around and he said, you can put using a syringe obviously water back under the skin right not a load of water just a little bit of water to right, so hydrate the skin again and it pushes it all back out if you know what i mean so that can they can get a fingerprint but I'm going with this guy. I agree. The fact that on his phone there's no photos or videos of his holiday, that's a big red flag in my eyes. 
the fact that uh, Lucy said she didn't know where Brazil was staying and she managed to track in that the place down by the Snapchat photo. Well, I'm sorry, but the front door to that Airbnb is at the back. So, <laughs> how are you going to tell what the door is or the plant pot on the step? You can't see that. And then she said she phoned the police at 9 p.m. a.m. She didn't. There's no record of her phoning the police at 9 a.m. She said she phoned again and they said they're sending a helicopter out. They didn't. So then she went up there in the afternoon. No. Yes, she went up to the station. But that was the first time she reported his body missing. Right. By then, too late for the search team to get out there and have a look. So it was on the Tuesday the search team started. And not only that, if she, if police had been informed at 9am, right, about Jay going missing, they'd have done their preliminary report. Where was it he went missing from? He was up in the mountains, okay. Right. We need to inform his family. So his family would have been informed by the afternoon. They had phoned the UK police. The UK police would have got in touch with whatever district we came under. And they had come down and informed the family. She didn't get the phone call. Sorry, they didn't even go to us. They went by phone down. She didn't get a phone call, call till 2 a.m. in the morning, Tuesday morning. Why did it take so long? If Lucy phoned the police at 9 a.m., not she said she did, why did it take so long to let the family know? Yeah? So I don't believe Lucy. I believe that the fact is she didn't report him missing until the afternoon. And then apparently she managed to get a lift up there by some American woman. Don't know how true that is. And they found the Airbnb. And she knocked on the door and asked cousin, where's Jack? Well, she knows where cousin lives. She knows cousin. From previous encounters, they'd known him all weekend. They'd been with him all weekend, on and off. Right? And he said, these are his words. I wouldn't just take something like, well, I won't say exact words, but he said something like, I wouldn't just take any lad back to my place. I took him back because his friends had left him and he was a friend of a friend. So whose friend was he? I can't see him being Brad's friend, but I can see him being Lucy's. He then says, Jay was alive when he arrived at the Airbnb and alive when he left. It was strange. So that. And then, he says he goes back to bed and then he gets a phone call from a, fr a friend of Jay's saying that he's stuck in the mountains, lost in the mountains, he's in a ditch and he's got cut by a cactus. Well, the only person who'd even been saying about being cut by a cactus was Lucy. She's the one that said that Jay, when, she, when Jay phoned her, which we know is not true, that... He said he got cut by, a, he was lost, he had 1% battery, he had no water, and he was got cut by a cactus. She's the only one who told us that. Yet, I have said, his friend said, phoned him, and said he'd been cut by a cactus. That had to be Lucy. But you see, the Spanish police are so, oh, so upon their investigation. 
Then let the two guys in the Airbnb go home. Yep. And then let Lucy fly home or wherever she went from there. There's no forensic checks on the any of the phones. No forensic checks on Airbnb until like two weeks later. No forensic check as we know on the car. So what the hell? How's that an investigation when there's been no investi no checks on their phones, on the Airbnb, on the car, nothing. And where's that blanket that was round his legs? Where's the blanket? Plus, right, they said they called the searcher, but they secretly carried on doing the searches. And from my understanding, the reporters knew about this, and they were told not to say, they couldn't say anything. Why wasn't Debbie and the father told about this? Why wasn't they told, look, the search is going on, but we publicly said now to isn't because we want all the reporters gone, we want all these spectators gone. We can't do our job while we've got all that going on around us. Why couldn't I tell her that? That way she may not have had to go and get get this Dutch team in if she'd known they were still doing a search. Exactly. Some wildlife should have tipped the authorities off. Oh, and don't even go on about that Mark Williams Thomas. He came home. He made a couple of statements, right? And since his body's been found, we've no, heard nothing else. But apparently he come across this criminal uh, background sort of stuff, yeah? But we haven't heard of this Mark Thomas since the body's been found. Hold on, that's showing there, that's the last pink, yeah? Hold on. Which is here.
Right? If you look at that. You've got the road. The Airbnb, you've got the road. And then up here is where his phone last pinged. Which is here. So, from what they're saying, the ravine is. Oh, I'm going to try. I'll oh, find that ravine. It's this one. Because they're saying the line, they're taking the line from there across to here. So, it's this ravine. Right, but we know his phone pinged here. Not there. I've heard you. I have heard you. She's not a mule, because a mule is someone who takes it across borders. Right? Like, they pack it on the body, they pack it in the cases, whatever, and take it from one country to another. She's flown out to these countries, and she's given the D-R-U-G-S at the destination. I'll tell you now, right? Where am I going? I'm going to go into where the Airbnb was, right? right? This is the area that I'm going to go into. Alright. Now. I've watched a lot of videos of the hikes and the tra uh, trails and the caves. And I know there's a trail that leaves from, I believe, goes from Mascot. From here, 
there's a hocus trail right and they take you down this pathway and everything and through cat through these tunnels caves and whatever to get to get to I'm not sure if it's this beach or this beach, but there's a beach around here somewhere. Right? I think it might be this one. But there's a cave, and they walk through these caves and these tunnels, right? And it leads them to that beach. I believe, right? I'm not sure if it's, I don't know if it was that one or, or what, you know what I mean, but I know it was one of them because I've seen the video. And it takes about four hours each way. Four hours to get there, four hours to come back. But you can have a, a break, you know what I mean? You can have a break when you get to the your destination. So... That in Masca, there's tunnels all over this place that go down to these beaches. There's tunnels around here that lead down to these coves. Right? I believe Right? I believe uh, this was rented out by I have quite a lot. Maybe just for a couple of nights or one night here or one night there. But I believe he rented that place out a lot. Forty pound a night. It's not a lot of money to pay, is it? Especially when you're making like four thousand or more. And I believe he used those tunnels, him and his friends would use those tunnels to get down to the beaches, to do the boat, to get their haul off, right? To get whatever it is they was bringing in, to bring back up to this Airbnb. And from there then, he'd meet up with whoever, say Lucy, and all of all his other little runarounds, yeah? Give them out these bags. And then arranged to meet at a certain time every night to give the bags back and what and the money they made. Yeah. But I don't believe for a fact, for any time, sorry, not for a fact, I don't believe for one minute that even if with Lucy backing him, go, oh he's a good guy, he's a solid guy, he's this guy. You are not going to give someone you've never met before a bag with what? Seventeen thousand pounds worth in of D R U G S. No, you're not gonna do that. Maybe five hundred or even a thousand maybe. But not seventy. Not seventeen. You're not gonna do that. Right, but I think something happened on that night and on that beach. We've all seen that video. We've all seen it. So, let's turn the music off. So, we've all seen that video of the beach. So, that to me, as soon as I was seeing it, I went, that makes more sense to me than him going off to the Airbnb just to party. Right? That makes more sense. Something happened on that beach. Don't know what. Don't know what over. 
B D R U G S B the egg, uh, the watch. I don't know, but something happened on that beach because the video stream for that night has been took down. Been took down. I think he was then bundled into a car. I think he was then took up to the up to into the hills and mountains. And I think he was thrown. I think he was pushed. Whatever. Thrown, pushed, whatever. That's my opinion. But why how would this clothes get down there by because if you're gonna push someone off a cliff or throw someone off a cliff with no clothes on, and then throw his clothes down after him. His clothes aren't going to land right by him. They're not. They're going to go all over the place. You know yourself, you throw a pile of clothes up in the air, it's not going to land in the same spot as where you stand. They're going to land all over the place. So, how did his body get down that ravine how did his clothes get by the side of him? Why was no, there no videos, no photos, nothing of the holiday on his phone? Why is Lucy lying? Why is Cuisine lying? Well, we know why they, those two are lying. And you know, it's, it's Rocky, the guy who is with in the Airbnb. He come out with the same story. As cuisine, cuisine said, like he he arrived here alive, he left alive. You've all seen that photo of him on the steps with the blanket around him, right? What does his friend say? Oh, and then cuisine says, I don't just bring anyone up to my Airbnb. I I brought him back because he was a friend of a friend. I don't know him that well, but he's a friend of a friend. What did his friend say? You've all seen that blankie on the doorstep. We've been moved that blankie on the doorstep with a cigarette. And I don't know him that well. If he had to uh, hustle with someone, I don't know. And that is word for word what Quasim said that Rocky said. Rocky steak the same as cuisine. Now, if that isn't a rehearsed speech, what the hell is it? Because everyone has a different view of everything. I could walk down the road with my son, right? I could see something, right, going on. We both could see something going on. But his version is going to be different from my version. It's not going to be exactly the same word for word, verbatim, word for word. It's not. So that is, I, and I can't see the Spanish police doing anything else about this case. They're going to wrap it up with a nice little bow on top of it. Right? So, now we come to a sticky point. Right? We're going to go to the GoFundMe. Right? Let's have a look. Let's see what they've, how much they've raised. Wow. 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 One thousand five hundred top donation. Wow. Seventy-three thousand one hundred and nine pounds raised. Right now, I think this is the last one she put up here. That Debbie Duncan, the mother, put. 
Hello everyone, and thank you for all your kind support and condolences in the light of the tragic news that Jay's body has been found. We've over we are overwhelmed with grief and are so grateful for your support. The wonderful team from the Netherlands, Sydney, Zurich, Hongdon, have remained in Spain all week all, and have continued continued to support us since Jay was found. They are due to fly home in the coming days and we're so appreciative of their dedication and support. We would like to thank LBT Global for their support during this impossible time. We are working with agencies to arrange Jay's repatriation to the UK and the remaining funds along with the future donations will be used to help with this if needed and pay for Jay's funeral costs back home. Right, it said the remaining funds, along with any future donations. Oh, okay. We want to give our boy the same job he deserves, so please do continue to share and support our fundraiser. However, you can, you can. I'm gonna say. However, you can. Now. The LBT Global spoke about it, and they said it could cost up to £20,000 for a funeral. That's with the repatriation back to the UK and everything else. Well, she had, start off if she had over, they hit the 30000 within days. Then it went up to something like thirty-six, forty thousand, and with that she withdrew some of the money, and she stated, "And I'm going to find them, see all the old updates, okay?" Uh, right. Uh, and apparently, it was the Dutch team that got in touch with the family. They didn't get in touch with them. The, the Dutch team got in touch with the family. All right, so they had like 36... A thousand, forty thousand, and they withdrew some. What for? You can say you might be thinking, what would they withdraw the money for? Hmm. Oh, I know. They're gonna get some search teams in as well. No, no, no. They grew out 30,000 30, or thirty thousand plus of their funds to pay for family and friends to come over to help in the search. What? The only person I brought over who helped in the search that I know of was the uncle. And he said, this case is too sus. There's too many red flag sort of things. It doesn't make sense. He was very open about what he said. But he had to go back after a while because... Apparently, his kids had school. But the kids had just broken up for school, so that didn't make sense to me. Anyway, so they all, he goes back home. By then, Lucy's already left. We know Kazim and his friend Rocky had already left. And then... So she's paid all this money for all family and friends and Tom, Dick and Harry down the road and whoever else to fly over. Not to help with the search for Jay. Now these people are generously given their money. Right? Generously given their money to help find Jay. And now spending it on family to bring over who didn't help in the search, not even brag 
He didn't even go up. His best friend didn't even go up and search. Right? And then you're thinking, okay, she's got this judge team coming over. She's got, right? She's got up to like 50 something thousand by now. She's paying for this judge team to come over. Oh, yeah, she paid for the judge team to come over, but just accommodation and flights. Right? Nothing else. It's just accommodation and flights. So it wasn't food, it wasn't drinks, it wasn't anything else, just accommodation and flights. Well, that isn't going to take, what, another 20,000, surely. Yeah? And then she's asking to keep donating so that people can, they can give him the de- send-off he deserves. Well, I'm sorry, but where's all, I'd like to see a breakdown with receipts of where all that money has gone. And now she's now they've got that extra twenty thousand to get him home and to give him his funeral. One person there, a thousand five hundred pounds. That's enough just to bury him. You know what I mean? Well we're not quite enough. But it's halfway there to burying him. Let's have a look. Let's, let's see. Oh. Right. This is people's hard earned money here. I'm not going to go through the whole list, I'm not. But this is people's hard going money. Who's donating this money? And to be honest with you, I got, you might think I'm being nasty and spiteful and whatever else, but we've had many children go missing. Many. Many children get killed. Yeah? Many children have been killed. You don't see their fa- families calling out for help with their funeral to give them their child their last final, the best funeral you can give a child. You don't see them calling out for that. Aye. And what about his insurance he would have had on his travel insurance? Would that not cover some of it as well? Like the repatriation or something like that, the flight home. I'm not being funny. I'm not being nasty. I can see where she wants to give him his final last send off a good one. Because that's, that's the last thing she can do for her son. Right? But I think now they need to shut this. They need to shut this go fund me. Because that is more than enough to get that child home and more than enough to give him his burial. And as we've just heard, they can't do an autopsy or an inquest over here, or an inquest over here. At least, I think they can do an autopsy, but I don't think they can do the inquest over here in the UK. Right, until the Spanish finish their investigation. Until they finish their uh, report and everything. So that could take months. And then, if we do an autopsy and a a Roxingheim. 
Right, an inquest. That will take months. An inquest can take a while. So it's not as if they're going to be able to fly him home. Unless they say, no, we don't want no inquest, we don't want no more autopsies, we just want to bury him. Uh huh? You know, if the family say that, I can see why. Right? Because it's got to be, it's got to be hard. It's not easy. It can't be easy on them. But as parents, I want to know, firstly, because I've not been able to see my son, that A, that is my son. By DNA. Yeah? So, I want to find that out first. Because I don't trust the Spanish police. Sorry to say this, but I don't. Because everything seems a bit too sus. Apparently, they cancelled the search after 12 days, but secretly they do searches. But you never heard Chris, who we showed on Tenerife, Chris Tenerife, is, his name is, saying anything about seeing any searches while he was out searching. I remember on one of the searches, he said, oh, there's a family over there. He could see the family, like the father and the son. But you never seen any other searches. You never seen any helicopters flying around on his uh, TikToks. Any drones, nothing. So I don't believe there was searching. But then when the family said, oh, we've got this team of experts coming in, it's like, oh, okay. And don't forget, they didn't want the English coming over and helping with the investigation. They could help with the search, but not the investigation. And the reason our police didn't go over there was they didn't believe that he was up in them hills. Why would our police go over there to do a search? when I don't believe is in them mountains. I always said from the beginning, if he's in them mountains, it's not because he fell, not because he collapsed with dehydration, nothing like that. It's because he was put there. Put there. There's too, 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 too many red flags around his phone, around that, uh, Screenshot is sent to Lucy, apparently, which is, oh, so many red flags. Like, on that screenshot is sent to Lucy, it's actually got someone else on that screenshot, up on the road site. But on that screenshot, it shows last transmission, 821. And at the top of the phone, it's got 150. How could he send that, send that if the last transmission was the day before at 8.21? How could he send his pin location at 150 when his last transmission was at 8.21? Which would make sense because apparently he said, they said he was talking to Brad on the phone. And Brad said he seemed happy enough, he wasn't worried, all this law. He wasn't acting scared, he didn't do nothing like that. It's like, oh, look where I am, Brad. Showing him the video, on the video of where he was. Yeah? So, I don't think that was Jay doing that video call, right? Because when his phone last pinged, there was someone else up on the road, and you can see it, it's in a green spot. If you find that 
live again, that TikTok that shows you that. You watch, look at that. There's a green spot. And that shows there's another phone talking to the phone, which has just sent the screenshot. So I think it was someone else who took the screenshot of Jay's phone. And sent it to Lucy. But I don't think it was at 8.21 in the morning. I think it was at 1.50am in the morning. The Tuesday morning. Right. They had enough time to dispose of her body. Because the search wasn't going to start till Tuesday. What about half eight, nine? Even ten o'clock before they got started? Right, so there's too many red flags, and but I can't. See, as I said, I can see the Spanish police. They said this autopsy could take a week or more. Right, and all of a sudden, woo! The next day, they've got his fingerprints. They've got a uh, head injury to him. He's badly decomposed. He has broken bones. Oh, yeah, I thought you said the result wouldn't come back for another week. Right? How can I say one day I was going to take a good week to do this autopsy? And then next day tell us, well, I've got his fingerprints. He's got broken bones, which fall in line with a, 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 a lung fall. Um, he's got a head con wound, yeah, open or not open. And, yeah, he's closed up by the side of him. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I'd like to know someone who could throw some clothes down a cliff and it all landing in a nice pile or whatever by the side of that person. If I went up there and I threw clothes off that mountain top, I can guarantee you they are not going to land by the body. They're not. I live quite high where I live. I'm quite high. Now, if I just throw some out my window, several items of clothing, say, they're not going to land at the bottom of, my, of where I live. Yeah, it'll land at the bottom, but not right at the bottom. It'll be spread about. And don't forget, he was under bushes. He was under some sort of bushes and cactuses. So how did his clothes not get caught up on any of them? Those thrown over. Nope. Not believing this one bit. But like I said, we're never going to find out the truth because Spanish are going to wrap this up with a nice little bow on the top of it going, thank you very much. It's all yours now. Right? And they're going to have it sealed so, so flipping tight that even if we did an investigation over here, we're not going to find anything out from them. They're not going to divulge any of their information that they found. Nothing. So I feel sorry for the family. But I, because they don't know the truth. And they never will never know the truth. Right? Never. Right? I suppose the Spanish are waiting on the toxicity, tox, toxicity results to come through. That can take a while, I know that. But that guy who's talking, he knows about bodies, he knows about fingerprinting and all that lot, and he don't agree with what's being said. He doesn't agree with it. 
doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense from the beginning to the end. Not one bit of it makes sense. And why, if his body was found on a Saturday, then his body was removed on the Sunday, as it's being said. Why? Why did they wait till Monday to tell the reporters? Why wasn't it released on the Saturday or the Sunday when they pulled his body out of that ravine? That's what's annoying to me. Anyway, I didn't want to make it a long one tonight because I'm tired and I need to get some sleep. So think about what we said about the de uh, the fingerprinting and about how his clothes were fired, found by the side of him, but it was under like bushes and whatever. So if his body was thrown over or if he fell over the cliff, how did his clothes come off him? And how did his clothes get in a pile by the side of him? Because if even if he was pushed off the cliff or thrown, and then his clothes thrown after. They would not have landed in a pile by him. They'd have landed on the plants, the cactus plants, the bushes, the rocks. Why is there no videos or photos of his holiday on his phone? And as for Lucy and Cuisine, I hope you have a nice life. I hope you go to bed every night and you never think about this lad. I hope you sleep well. Because I can assure you, his family isn't. His family isn't. So, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to play you out with Jay again. Okay? So, till later please like this video this live share it leave me a comment and if you haven't already subscribe i'd really appreciate this so thank you again for being here good night